In this video, I'm going to talk to you about blockchain terminology, a glossary of terms for beginners. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about what is blockchain, Ethereum, cryptocurrencies, mainnets, smart contracts, trustlets, ganache, right? All of these words. Let's get started. So the first one is let's set up a common understanding of what is blockchain, how to get started, and what is Solidity and Web3. And then I'm going to take you through all the terms, right? So number one, a blockchain is a network of computers connected with each other in a peer-to-peer -peer mode. That means there is no centralized network. It's a decentralized connected computer nodes. Each computer, each node has its own copy of the ledger which matches across the network. And that is how you make this system as a trustless, trustless system. Now, all of these nodes, when connected to each other, form a network, for example, Ethereum. Ethereum is a blockchain that, that supports execution of smart contracts. There is a, another video which I have created on smart contracts. The link is given in the description section of this video below. So a smart contract is a programmable language which is written in order to execute an if-then-else statement. So between a contract between two parties or more, multi-party contracts is known as smart contract. How do you connect to Ethereum now? In order to connect to the Ethereum network, you would use Geeth, Go Ethereum, which is a client that can make your computer as a node to connect to the Ethereum network. You can have a server that can run on Ethereum network and validate transactions in order to get transaction fee share. We're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. Now, EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine is a client that connects to the node and Geet is installed there. Web3 interface. So Web3 is a set of libraries that allows you to interact with the Ethereum client or the Ethereum blockchain itself. So the languages that you can use to write is Python, JavaScript, which is Web3, JS, Node.js, on Node.js and stuff, and Java itself. So all of these three programming languages many and many more you can use to write. So let's look at how do you get started in order to create a smart contract on Ethereum blockchain? You would need remix.ethereum, which is an online client that can help you connect to Ethereum blockchain. So I'll go to remix. I'll quickly show you what is remix. This is one of the methods to connect back to the Ethereum network. And this is what we are gonna be using in the rest of the course that I'm creating right now. So remix.ethereum. So you go to Google, search for remix.ethereum. It'll take you to remix.ethereum.org. And here you would see that this is the IDE for Web3 development. So from for smart contracts development, you would see the default workspace. And then you can add here files and make contracts, write contracts over here. You can create new workspace and stuff. We're gonna talk about all of these in the next few videos. So this is an online client. You can also use Visual Studio Code. You can use any other IDE of your choice in order to do that development. Next, we are also going to learn Web3 development in this course. So we are gonna use ripple.it, which is an environment giving you access on Node.js and you can write a lot of code. You can use, as I said, any other Node.js environment of your choice. So Ripple IT, Ripple.it is going to connect you to Ethereum via Infura. Infura is a provider where it lets you interact with the Ethereum network using APIs. Don't get too much bothered about it. Just understand how we are connecting. And in the next set of videos, as I said, I'm going to walk you through how to connect it. 
So ripple.it, again, the, all of these are free, open source, right? I mean, obviously to an extent, but you go to ripple.it and you sign up for ripple.it. You know, use your email address. It will ask you for password, you know, set it up as usual. And then you can create ripples, R-E-P-L-S. Don't worry about it. We are going to walk you through. When you say create, it gives you Python environment, Node.js, and all other environments that you can think of. So just for the training purposes, we are going to be using Node.js going forward. Not now, not in this video, but this is where you want to go set up, create an account as well. Next is Infura. Infura gives you access to APIs that can connect to the Ethereum mainnet or testnet. I'm going to talk about what is mainnet, testnet in a minute, but this is Infura. So app.infura.io, you would go to this website, register it. Once you register, click on create new key like this. And here from the networks, select Web3 API for now. Don't worry what it is. We'll, we'll talk to you about this and create a project. So say my test project. And once you do that, say create. As soon as you create, you would be provided by an API with a key. This key with the API would let you connect to the Ethereum network. We'll use these APIs, the keys, in our programs going forward to connect to the Ethereum mainnet. Now, Gorli testnet has this URL. So in all of our programs going forward, we'll use a testnet, which is Gorli, and this is the URL that you're gonna be copying. Don't worry, don't copy this, because once after this video is done, I'm gonna delete this project. So there is no need of copying this. Create your own account. It's a free account on Infura. Now, do you need only Infura? No. There are options like Alchemy and others who are providing you free API keys to connect to Ethereum. So this is what you need. Three things, remix.ethereum, ripple.it for Web3 programming, remix.ethereum for Solidity programming, and Infura. So let's go through the glossary of terms that I talked to you about in order to understand at a very high level what is Ethereum and get comfortable with the terms. So the first one is blockchain. As I discussed, a connected network of decentralized computers for storing digital transactions or data in a distributed way in a decentralized digital ledger format. These data sets or transactions create blocks that are connected, linked with each other, like a chain. Look at my other videos wherein I discuss about why the term blockchain. We discuss use cases there. Ethereum, it is a public blockchain, a decentralized, computer node networks that supports implementation and execution of smart contracts on the chain. Smart contracts. There is a video on smart contracts out there with I, which I have created. A self-executing program that is developed and deployed on a blockchain. These smart contracts are set for automatic execution when a predetermined or pre-agreed upon terms are met. For example, if you decide to have NFT or a piece of art transferred from party A to party B, when the buyer deposits $100,000. So as soon as you get 100,000 tokens or dollars on your contract, you would transfer that piece of art to the person. So it's an agreement. That is a smart contract. Again, as I said, there's a video out there. Go look at it. Solidity. It's an object-oriented programming language for implementing smart contracts on Ethereum blockchain. Web3.js. It is a collection of libraries that allow you to interact with a local 
or a remote Ethereum node using HTTP, IPC, or WebSockets. In all of our courses, we'll be using WebSockets or HTTP. Next is cryptocurrency. It is a form of digital money that utilize the encryptions and consensus algorithms for generation of coins and tokens on a blockchain network. So Ethereum blockchain has its own digital money token or coin known as Ether. Blockchain Bitcoin has its own token known as Bitcoin, right? So those are tokens or coins generated in order for running it or distributing it within the network based on the number of transactions performed. So we'll go through it in a different video. Trustless. A blockchain is often referred to be a trustless system because the two entities or more entities that are performing a smart contract do not necessarily need to trust each other. The elimination of the trust itself from the transaction leads to the name trustless for blockchain. Testnet. Example, Gorli, Sepolia. These are the two testnets as of 2023. A staging or a playground blockchain environment where you can run your smart contract, validate it before you decide to put it in production. Mainnet, a production version of a blockchain environment like Ethereum mainnet. In Infura, when we go there, you saw there is mainnet, which is Ethereum mainnet because it's running on Ethereum. And then you have Gorli and Sepolia. Next, Kanash. The desktop application that can offer support for Ethereum smart contract development. So what it means is if you have a team of 100 developers developing decentralized applications on blockchain, you can install Ganache. That means you will have your own Ethereum testnet environment. You can test your smart contracts and applications there before you deploy on the Ethereum production mainnet. Token type ERC20. So there are two token types at a broad level, ERC20 and ERC721. So ERC20 is a fungible token. That means coins, tokens that are created on blockchain. So uh, ERC20 is a fungible token, which is defined by a series of functions. So there is a standard ERC20 functions that needs to be supported in order to adhere to that framework. The reason they are known as fungible because there are plenty of the tokens, like more, like there are many tokens of the same thing. So for example, if you have a dollar bill, one dollar bill, there could be millions and billions of one dollar bills which carry the same dollar value. So even though a billion one dollar bills are tokens it doesn't matter if i have one bill versus another because they have the same value however 721 erc protocol is non-fungible example i have a painting of mona lisa or i have a, a very unique piece of art that is not replicable that is not duplicatable it's not fungible, not interchangeable. So a unique piece of art, a unique key. If I have a dollar bill and I get it signed by Elon Musk or Bill Gates, that unique signed dollar bill becomes a non-fungible token because if I exchange it with a different dollar bill, it may not have the same value because one of the dollar bills has those signatures from Elon Musk or Bill Gates, but the other bill may or may not have, right? So a fungible token which exists in plenty and they are interchangeable, the same value, while non-fungible tokens or NFTs are also smart contracts that have a unique identity, unique value, like piece of art, digital key, signed photographs, documents, and stuff like that. Moving on. Get, 
also known as Go Ethereum. It is the Ethereum client that we spoke about that will connect your computer or a server as a node to the Ethereum network. Geet is what you would need in order to get onto the Ethereum network open source, publicly available, and start staking or mining cryptos, right? DAP, decentralized application. A software application that is written on a decentralized infrastructure or a decentralized database, such as a blockchain, which does not rely on a centralized architecture. This is a decentralized app, like a Uniswap or a Quick QuickSwap. The exchanges are decentralized applications, are an example of a decentralized application. A wallet, a digital wallet or a purse that holds all of your coins, cryptos, tokens. Example, MetaMask. Coinbase, Trust Wallet. There are a lot of wallet service providers out there, MetaMask being the top, right? Wallet also happens to be an address on a blockchain. So wallet is a blockchain address that acts as a purse or a wallet that holds coins, cryptos, your tokens that you do. Next, NFTs. As discussed, NFTs are ERC-71 smart contracts that, are, that has a property of non-exchangeable. Example, piece of art, art. IPFS, Interplanetary File System, is a P2P, peer-to-peer -peer protocol for storing and sharing data in a distributed file environment. Each file is uniquely identified by content addressing URI in a global namespace. And you can use this for your smart contract for generating NFTs. Proof of work is a consensus mechanism, a protocol on blockchain where miners solve a cryptographic puzzle. A successful miner is the one who beats other to find the hash of the last recorded block. Now, by the way, I have a full video dedicated for proof of work and proof of stake please look at the description section below. Proof of stake is another consensus protocol or mechanism where stakers stake their own cryptocurrencies for validation of a transaction. So Ethereum before September of 2022 was on proof of work consensus mechanism where there was a lot of wastage of computer power. Why? For that, look at my the videos, I explain why the computer power is wasted in proof of work. Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others are still proof of work. Proof of stake is now Ethereum, Solana, and other blockchain. The new blockchains are mostly on proof of stake. And here, the wastage of the power and the resources is eliminated. Again, these are some of the words that you need to be aware of in order to get accustomed to blockchain. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.